दामोदर लीला फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम टेंथ कैंटो नाइन्थ चैप्टर एंड टूडे वर्स इज वर्स नंबर ट्वेल्व एंड आई गॉट अ मैसेज फ्रॉम हरप्रे श्रीदेवी माता जी दैट गुरु महाराज इज गोइंग टू कम लिटिल लेट एंड माता जी विल स्टार्ट द क्लास लिटिल बिट एंड गुरु महाराज विल जॉइन शॉर्टली थैंक यू सो मच हरे कृष्ण माता जी प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम्बल पेसेंस इज ऑलगोज टू शिल प्रोफर Thank you so much. Yeah, Shri Bhakti, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Lakshmi, all glories to Guru Dev, and all glories to Damodar Lila. Thank you, Mata Ji, uh, for covering for Mar Guru Maharaj, and please uh, take over, Mata Ji. I am sharing the screen. Thank you. So we are on this very beautiful month of Damodar. This is the most important month in terms of bhakti. as his own nirj japata kumara said you know this is the month buy one get one free <laughs> there's a big spiritual discount at this month if you do a little something for krishna he becomes so pleased and in fact krishna says in this month if one offers even once a ghee lamp with love and devotion i become purchased by that devotee so that's how important this month is and how important this damodar leela is because it glorifies the pure devotion of mother yashoda So let's go on with these beautiful set of verses. We are on Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Ten, Chapter Nine, Verse Number Twelve, and it goes like this. We begin with the invocation prayers. Om Agyan Ati Mirandasya Gyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Nivitam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Ve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadatikam. जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो दर्स गोज लाइक दिस यम सुतंबित कृष्णा Or how powerful he was, because of maternal affection for Krishna, she never even cared to know who he was. Therefore, when she saw that her son had become excessively afraid, she threw the stick away and desired to bind him, <laughs> so that he would not commit any further naughty activities. Purport. Mother Yashoda wanted to bind Krishna not in order to chastise him, but because she thought that the child was so restless that he might leave the house in fear. That would be another disturbance. Therefore, because of full affection to stop Krishna from leaving the house, she wanted to bind him with rope. Mother Yashoda wanted to impress upon Krishna that him that since he was afraid merely to see her stick, he should not perform such disturbing activities as breaking the container of yogurt and butter and distributing its contents to the monkeys. Mother Yashoda did not care to understand who Krishna was and how his power spreads everywhere. This is an example. A pure love for Krishna. O Magyana Timiranda Sya Gyana Janeshla Kya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Ve Namaha. So we can see over here a very beautiful description of motherly love for her naughty child Krishna, displayed by Mother Yashoda. And Yashoda's love is glorified by all the great saints, acharyas. 
in the scriptures because of what? Because of its purity. There is no awe and reverence at all. In fact, in the Damodar Leela, in the Damodar Ashtakam, in the third verse, you can, if you remember the translation, it goes like this. By such childhood pastimes as this, he is drowning the inhabitants of Gokul in pools of ecstasy and is revealing to those devotees who are in, uh, he's revealing to those devotees Whose pure, uh, whose pure love is imbued with intimacy and is free from all conceptions of awe and reverence. That he is only conquered by pure devotees whose love is free of all conceptions of awe and reverence and is imbued with pure intimacy, pure love for Krishna. So Krishna is showing that he is not impressed with all uh, you know, uh, uh, ostentatious displays of opulent worship but he's conquered by what? Pure love. That's what captures Krishna. And this is clearly being demonstrated over here that Yashoda doesn't care <laughs> to know who this Krishna is and why he performs such wonderful feats. As a baby, he killed Putana. As a baby, he killed Trinavarta. As a baby, he killed Bakasura. He's busy killing so many demons and constantly something or the other is happening. But she doesn't stop to think, who is this Krishna? Why is he, you know, doing all these feats? How is it that he's able to kill such human demons? She doesn't stop to think. She only prays to Lord Vishnu. Oh, my dear Lord Vishnu, please protect my baby. <laughs> Whenever some bad things happen, she keeps remembering the Lord, Supreme Lord Vishnu, according to her. And then she keeps asking the Lord to protect her little baby Krishna. Why? Because her mother's heart thinks, this is my baby. I have to protect him. I have to take care of him. And now, because he's being very, very naughty and being very, very restless, she's worried what more mischief he will do now. Now he's got frightened. He's running away from me. And seeing the stick, he's become so afraid. Now who knows what he will do next? So actually, she ties him up, not just to chastise him, but also to restrain him. She thinks that he's very naughty, he's very restless, and he will get into more trouble, and he will do more mischief, and it's not good for him also. So I better tie him up, and that will keep him quiet for some time, and will teach him a lesson also. <laughs> so Mother Yashoda, it was said over here, she wanted to tie him, not to chastise him, but because she thought the child was so restless and he will get into more trouble. And that would be another disturbance. So full of affection, to stop him from leaving the house, she tied him with a rope. To what? To the wooden grinding motor. Why? Because that's his partner in crime. <laughs> they both together have done the mischief because Krishna overturned that heavy wooden grinding motor and he stood on that and he broke the pot of yogurt and then when all the butter and yogurt and everything came cascading down, he's busy giving it to all the monkeys everywhere and they're all having a jolly good time. Of course, Krishna is afraid also because every time little children do mischief, you know, children are making a lot of noise, but when they start doing mischief, they become very quiet. Suddenly all the noise stops and mommy comes to know something is going on because why these children have become suddenly so quiet? <laughs> So like this, Krishna is very quiet, he's doing all the mischief, giving the uh, butter to the monkeys and he's looking here and there because he knows he's doing something wrong. He knows that Mother Yashoda will get very angry and so he's hiding from her and, <laughs> and he's doing all kinds of mischievous activities and Mother Yashoda follows the butter smeared footprints and quietly from behind she's coming to see what this little fellow is up to. Let's see what mischief he is doing. And here he is doing all the mischief. So she says, okay, now I'm going to catch you and I'm going to tie you up and I'm going to keep you like that for the rest of the afternoon so that you don't get into any more trouble. Hmm? And this is to teach him a lesson as well as to restrain him. But then <laughs> we see what happened. Krishna cannot be caught by just somebody trying to catch him, right? What happens? She tries to get a rope and baby Krishna is very small. He's only two or three years old, just a little baby, toddler, infant. But she cannot tie him up. 
Now this is a cow herd's house. There's plenty of work because there are nine hundred thousand cows. Remember, Kailanta Maharaj has so many cows, so there's no shortage of ropes. So she gets some more rope. She ties some more rope. Again, the same thing. Like this, she's asked for some more rope. She ties some more rope. Like this, hundreds of ropes are tied, and still she cannot tie up baby Krishna. And she's thinking, what is going on here? She's laughing. She's puzzled. She's crying. She's not crying, but she's sweating. All the flowers are falling from her hair, and all the gopis, you know, the other elderly gopis, they're all come to see the fun. What is going on in Krishna's household? Let's see what is the latest mischief he is doing. And so let's let me catch. Let me watch the fun. So they all come over there, and all the gopis are over there, and they're watching everything going on. Guru Maharaj is joining. Guru Maharaj, please take over Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, I'm not able to see. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept Your video is not coming. Um... The connection is poor with um... Hare Krishna, Mataji, Shri Devi Mataji. Um, Guru Maharaj told me that within 15 20 minutes he will join. So just, you know, do the initial part. So that's that's what I did. One second, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Mataji, please continue. Good match got disconnected. Oh. Oh, okay. So every time in Gokul, Krishna does some pastime, some activity, it is just nectar for everyone. And whether he is being chastised or whether he himself is performing some activity or capturing a demon and killing him, everyone is just enchanted with this beautiful little baby boy who is the color of bluish black rain clouds with a beautiful peacock feather in his hair and with sandalwood on his face and with a blue flower tucked behind his ear and yellow silken garments and a beautiful flute in his hand and a buffalo horn tucked into his waist belt and a beautiful garland of flowers all around him and ankle bells on his beautiful feet and bangles on his hands and amulets on his arms and He's such a beautiful, beautiful little baby boy that everyone is just enchanted and they just stand around, you know, watching Krishna as still figures in a painting. That's how the description is there in Krishna book. That they're all just so enchanted with Krishna's childhood pastime. It's simply drowning in pools of ecstasy. So all the gopis are watching Mother Yashoda now trying to tie up baby Krishna. And every time she comes up, two fingers too short. Every time. And everyone is wondering, what is going on? Even Mother Yashoda is wondering, what is going on? I'm not able to tie up this little baby boy. He's such a small boy. And I'm not able to tie him up. And she's laboring so hard. And she's trying so hard. <laughs> She's getting more and more rope and trying to tie him, and every time it is two fingers too short. And finally, Krishna becomes very moved 
by his mother's pure affection for him she sees that he's she is he sees how hard she is working to tie him up and moved by her pure love he agrees to be tied up no one can tie up god who can tie up god but because he is captured by her love he agrees to be tied up to the wooden grinding water so finally she is able to tie him up and even that the description goes that until radharani came on the scene and offered her little hair ribbon she she offered her hair ribbon for the last part of the ropes to be tied up and finally when that ribbon was tied to the rope then he could be captured because it is said that radharani's pure love was also required to capture krishna so guru maharaj says that that uh, when she gave her hair ribbon from her hair finally yashoda mata was able to tie him up and she tied him up nicely and she said now you stay over there and you repent <laughs> all the mischief you have done while she carried on with all her other household activities and of course krishna was not going to sit there quietly he saw the yamal arjuna tree and then he had a mission he had something to do he had to rescue he had to save he had to liberate the two souls that were in the yamal arjuna trees who were none other than the two sons of kuvera manigriva and nalukuvara they were cursed by narad muni that's another very interesting story they were actually in a very intoxicated state and they were cowering in a lake completely you know without any clothes not even embarrassed when the great devotee of the lord narad muni came over there they were so lost to reality that they did not offer obeisances they did not offer respect they forgot to cover themselves and so narad muni seeing the degraded condition he cursed them to become trees who would be liberated when krishna came many centuries later to liberate them so now krishna says okay i'm going to go and liberate those yamal arjuna trees yeah uh, those two souls trapped in the arjuna trees so he goes in between the two trees and the wooden grinding motor becomes sideways topsy turvy and gets stuck between the two trees and krishna just pulls with all his might and the two trees come crashing down boom and suddenly two very dazzlingly beautiful demigods and they offer obeisances to krishna they circumambulate him they offer words of glorification and they are liberated and they go back to the spiritual world they are none other than the sons of kuvela manigriva and nalakuvara guru maharaj has come on again shrimati but we are not able to see him what should i do yeah please continue mataji until we can see guru maharaj um you sure yeah yes mataji because uh, guru maharaj is trying to connect um, think some internet problem is there okay so krishna as as he is as a little baby as a little toddler we may think such a small child 3 years old 2 or 3 years old and this particular past time actually it took place on dipavali day it is the day which is celebrated as dipavali the victory of lord ram over ravan and he is coming back to ayodhya so this is a very beautiful past time and it is celebrated by offering the ghee lamp to krishna and glorifying mother yashoda's pure love for krishna so krishna performs many 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 activities with this one activity who are those monkeys those monkeys were actually the monkeys in ram leela and krishna is glorifying the monkey service to him when they came as part of the army okay they crossed that lake crossed the ocean the ocean indian ocean and went to lanka and defeated the army of ravan and those monkeys now he wanted to glorify their service and he gave them butter with his own hands so this is another sweet past time where krishna is reciprocating with the love of the monkeys who sacrificed so much to uh, to capture uh, ravana to uh, to grant victory 
to rap over the divan army so this pastime of krishna and now in this leela is to reciprocate with the monkeys because their service is so glorious to the lord and then the another pastime here is of the yamalajuna trees who are these trees like i mentioned they are manigriva and nalakubara manigriva and nalakubara were the two sons of the demigods and they were cursed by narak to become trees and they were standing in the courtyard of nanda baba nanda maharaj for many 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 years they say hundred celestial years waiting for this pastime of the lord to take place so that they would be liberated and they would actually regain their position as demigods but now because of their purification they have become great devotees of the lord and this is also glorified in the damodar ashtakam ye kuvaratma jao vadha murtya va yadva tvaya mochita bhakti bhajao krita cha yatha prema bhaktin so kame praya cha na moksha graho mi damodare ha so just as you liberated the two sons of kuvera manigriva and nalakuvara from the curse of narad and made them into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with rope to a wooden grinding motor in the same way please give to me your very own prema bhakti i only long for this and have no desire for any kind of liberation uh, satyavrata muni is singing these glories isn't it in a conversation to narad muni we sing every day the damodar ashtakam this pastime of the lord is glorified of how he liberated manigriva and nalakuvara all these beautiful pastimes of the lord are to show us how he is only captured by pure love mother yashoda's love is so pure she doesn't know anything except that krishna is a little baby boy you know that part that uh, uh, pastime where you know he is accused of eating mud and he says no 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 mother i didn't eat any mud these boys are just saying things like this they just like to get me into trouble so they are just cooking up some stories so mother yashoda says i don't believe you you open your mouth and i'm going to see what is in your mouth <laughs> so she sits and she captures little krishna's face and she's holding his chin and she said come on open your mouth <laughs> and then krishna opens his mouth and there she sees rivers ocean mountain peaks waterfalls huge huge planets and herself also seeing krishna she sees that also in his mouth and for a moment she struck with wonder what am i seeing she seen the whole cosmos the whole creation everything in little baby krishna's mouth how is this possible so for a moment she wonders who is this creature this child is he a some kind of a demigod with mystic powers that he is showing me all this and then krishna immediately covers her uh, knowledge he doesn't he doesn't let her uh, analyze any more what is happening and she she again starts thinking this is my little baby boy and he doesn't uh, bring her any more by the illusory energy so she again thinks this is my naughty little child krishna <laughs> and she is chastising him and scolding him and loving him and worrying about him and packing his lunch pail and telling him to be careful and rubbing out again and again where is my baby has he come back from grazing the cows in the field so this is mother yashoda's love completely pure there is no tinge of awe and reverence at all this is important to understand because in the vaikuntha feature the lord is in his narayan feature and there he is worshiped with awe and reverence but he doesn't enjoy that as much as he enjoys the intimacy with his mother with his cowherd boyfriend with the gopis with radharani with gopas with his sakhas why because they don't know he is god and so they tease him they jump over him and play hide and seek they uh, steal his uh, lunch uh, pail and take things from the, his lunch box they do all kinds of things just like a little boy playing hide and seek and play with each other similarly mother yashoda and nand maharaj they just think this is my child i must scold him i must chastise him i must make sure he is growing up right <laughs> the gopis 
they are harassed by Krishna. <laughs> they are going with their pots of yogurt and butter and everything. And what does Krishna do? He goes them. <laughs> he comes in the middle and he says, nothing doing, you have to pay your taxes. Unless you pay your taxes, I'm not letting you go further. So he does all kinds of things and absolutely enjoys the pastimes with great love and intimacy with the Gopas, with the Gopis, with the other elderly Gopis, with Nanda Maharaj, with the Mother Yashoda, just to show that it is love and love alone and that's a pure love that captures him. And that is why we are all encouraged to bring out that love which is in our hearts, that dormant love which is there in all of our hearts by this process of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is the process given to us by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to bring out what is already there in our hearts, pure love for Krishna. In fact, Lord Chaitanya himself, he runs here and there, where is my Krishna, where is my Krishna, where is my Krishna? And sometimes, you know, he asks Gadada, where is my Krishna? And Gadada says, he's in my heart. So then Lord Chaitanya starts tearing at his heart, trying to find Krishna. And Gadada Pandit has to pacify him. My Lord, my Lord, calm down, be peaceful, he's coming, things like that. So this is to show how love is the driving force in the spiritual world. It is love and love alone which captures Krishna. And it is love which abounds in the spiritual world. This pure love is there in every living entity's heart. But we can, oh, the Lord living entities cannot access it because their consciousness is covered. They are still at the stage of eating, sleeping, mating, defending. But we who have come to the human form of life, we can attain the state of pure love by the process of purification, by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, by engaging in loving service to the Lord, we can attain the highest perfection of the human form of life. If we take up the process seriously, step by step, we will start going through the process. Sadhu Sangha, Adha Shraddha, Bhajana Kriya, which is initiation, Anartha Nivriti, which means purification by cleaning up all the anarthas in our heart. Then when 75% of the anarthas are clear, we come to the stage called Nishtha, which means steadiness. After that is asakti, which means one cannot not think of Krishna. Deep attachment for Krishna takes place. Then ruchi, very sweet taste in all the activities of devotion. Then bhava and then prema. So it is not an impossibility. It is very much possible because Srila Prabhupada has come to teach us the process of devotional service to show the way back home, back to Godhead. We just have to be serious and we have to be sincere and we have to apply the process and we can also have that spiritual television in our heart where we can see the pastimes of the Lord taking place if we purify our hearts. So that is why Srila Prabhupada says go back home, back to Godhead in this very lifetime. It is possible if we try, Krishna will help. Esham satata yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam enamam upayantite. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So Krishna gives the intelligence, Krishna gives the understanding and Krishna helps to cross over the ocean of nescience and go back home, which is actually our real home. We are in an alien place here. We don't belong here. We belong with Krishna in the spiritual world where every word is a song, every step is a dance, every day is a festival. And Krishna's glorification is going on all the time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sweet pastimes of the Lord are constantly going on. So, what um, what is the take home message we can say from all this Damodar Gita and Damodar Ashtakam and all these beautiful pastimes? Krishna is calling us. Why does Krishna perform all these pastimes? To enchant the conditioned souls, to attract the conditioned souls, to come back home, come back to him. 
So these are my sweet pastimes. These are my sweet devotees. Come, come back home. This is where you belong. Well, here he is struggling with the three modes of material nature. We are constantly attacked by Adibhautika, Adhyatmika, Adidaivika, and there are material miseries constantly attacking us. So the only shelter, the only safe zone is to be in Krishna consciousness all the time, thinking of Krishna, serving Krishna, glorifying Krishna, singing about Krishna, doing things for Krishna. Manmana Bhagavad Bhakto Madhyaji Maam Namaskuru Maami Vaishasi Satyam Te Pratijane Priyosine. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage to me. Thus, you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Hmm? Krishna says this, isn't it? 1865. Um, the verse says, if you do these things, you will be absorbed in me and you will come back home to me. So, we have a very wonderful, very sweet, very sublime process of Krishna consciousness given to us by the great Acharyas and given to us by Srila Prabhupada because of his mercy to us fallen conditioned souls. We have come to know who is God? Hmm? What is the spiritual world? Who am I? What am I supposed to do? What is my eternal identity? I am loving servitor of Krishna eternally. I am eternal spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. And my only identity is, I am eternal soul. And what is my only duty? To serve Krishna all the time. Jivera Swarupur, Nityera Krishna Das. There is no other work. <laughs> Save and accept serving Krishna in all circumstances, at all times, in all situations. So, you might say, I don't know how to serve. What should I do? Well, Krishna has given everybody some talent, some skill, some ability. So we simply use that ability in Krishna's service. Whatever we do, we do it as a service to Krishna. Yad karoshi, yad ashnashi, yad juhoshi, dadasi, yad, yad tapasya si kaunteya, tad kurushva madarpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you offer, whatever you give away, whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering unto me. So anything we do and everything we do, we try to do it in such a way that we are conscious of Krishna all the time and we are doing it as an offering to Krishna. We may be cooking, we may be driving our car, we may be writing a paper, we may be doing, we, we, I may be a surgeon doing a surgical operation, I may be a medical doctor writing a prescription, I may be a nurse, I may be a painter, a plumber, janitor, teacher, engineer, whatever I may be. I may be a simple homemaker. That's fine. Whatever activities we do, we simply do it in order to please Krishna. And then the simplest, humblest, most simple people among us has no bar. It is not that only a certain person can become Krishna conscious. Anybody can become Krishna conscious in any state of life and from any stage of life. Age, no bar. Education, no bar. Socioeconomic status, no bar. So you see how universal this appeal of Krishna consciousness. And anyone and everyone can take it up at any state of life and make their life perfect and go back home, back to Krishna. So thank you all for listening. Uh, very patiently. I don't know why or how Guru Maharaj didn't join. Uh, Guru Maharaj said, you just start the class. 15-20 uh, minutes later, I will join. But somehow, I think, uh, connection problem like we had yesterday. And here I am. I don't know uh, <laughs> how satisfied you are with this kind of a class, but what to do? <laughs> Here we are at the end of today's class. I apologize. Maybe you're very disappointed that Guru Maharaj But I'm simply trying to do what he asked me to. Please forgive me if I have disappointed you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Um, thank you so much. Yesterday you had to give class, but um, um, Krishna wanted you to give class. So that's why he arranged like this. 
but thank you so much for this spontaneous class mataji um you you narrated the past time very well and you explained the purpose uh, of our life also thank you so much mataji thank you dear devotees um i just want everyone to invite uh, into the discussion uh, if you want to share any um realizations or if you have any questions um please um uh, unmute and ask and also please turn on your cameras if possible thank you hari krishna and i'm, i'm here i'm listening just give me one second yes ma'am yes raj prabhu please hi krishna please accept my humble obeisances and says all glories to shrila prabhupada all glories to guru maharaj all glories to Devi Mataji for the most wonderful class that she gave and all of the devotees present. Uh, thank you for that most enthusiastic, wonderful class. Uh, I have a question on how, how should we understand this pastime? I mean, in terms of, in terms of Krishna, it's easy because it's just a we could see it in many ways but we even if we just saw it as a a most relishable pastime of him in his child form but it it's a bit more difficult to understand how we should learn from this and how we should understand from this from the other characters such as mother yashoda because in this pastime she wasn't playing the role of a devotee she was just playing the role of a perfect mother who was uh, in love with the perfect child mm -hmm. uh, so how can we learn and understand and how should we be thinking about this well that uh, there in the purport itself and i thought <laughs> that's what i explained in the class that her pure love is what captures krishna's heart and krishna himself so how should we understand means is very simple love captures krishna is there anything more to that okay maybe i'm just overthinking it <laughs> you. yeah it's like this when someone loves us very genuinely and very very sincerely and affectionately when we are captured by that feeling by that mood that genuine care that we are experiencing from that person's heart we are sensing that this person is just all out to help me or all out to uh, do something for my welfare and what happens to us we become captured by that isn't it we feel so moved we feel so touched and we feel so much obliged to that person and we feel oh i i want to reciprocate with this kind of pure uh, sentiment with this pure love and we say what can i do for you so it's a reciprocation that happens by one person extending themselves in love so when yashoda mata does all those things out of pure love krishna is captured and he reciprocates with his mother's love and then there's a sweet exchange of love which enhances the love more and more and each becomes happier and happier and happier it's like radharani when she meets krishna krishna becomes very beautiful and he becomes more enchanting so she is captured even more then when she feels so happy she becomes more beautiful and krishna gets enchanted and he is captured by her <laughs> so the love goes on increasing like this same with mother yashoda so the sweet loving exchange is just go on increasing more and more so that it is never ending nectar for uh, krishna and his devotees okay thank you i was thinking like in the that that works very beautifully with krishna because he can see that love but with uh, people that are misidentified with the material world if sometimes when one displays immense love for another and the words and actions are all out of love but the other person cannot does not reciprocate and they cannot see that love and they might even see it as something negative yes um, some misunderstand us but not devotees 
You yourself have experienced Janaki Nath Prabhu's pure love for you. And you know how deeply he cared for you and how much he continues to care for you and how much he has guided you and helped you every step of the way. In fact, it was his love which captured your heart and brought you more and more into bhakti. Isn't it? Yes, you're right, Mataji. So, there you go. That's pure love. He got you. <laughs> Thank you. That is why love is only the spiritual platform. Mm -hmm. Nothing else will satisfy our hearts. Nothing else can capture our hearts. It's only when we experience the pure love of a deeply spiritual person that we also become captured and we also want to become like that. We also want to follow the process of bhakti. That's what our Guru Maharaj did to us. He captured our hearts. Is that it? Yes, absolutely. And you're capturing all our hearts with your poetry. <laughs> Isn't it? I just, I was encouraged to, to try and just write whatever I feel. Wonderful, wonderful. Please uh, don't stop. Please keep going. Thank you. Thank you for your encouragement as well. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, you Prabhuji. Scarlett Mataji. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Shara Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj Chandramuni, and all glories to you. Uh, thank you for today's uh, class. Um, I have two uh, questions in each other. Uh, the one, the first one is uh, for me that I'm new in this movement. I, I do my best, I try my best to do everything that I learn, but I have a fear, very big fear for offense, to doing offense, to doing wrong, and thereby to bring to me bad karma because of that. Uh, when I don't, I didn't know, for instance, I didn't know to do uh, to do some kind of things, it's offense, and I do it without any bad thoughts. I just didn't know that you shouldn't do that. And then I, I get to know that you just bring to yourself bad karma. And that fear makes me to back up. You know what I mean? To just take it easy, to just not to do it instead of doing it. You know what I mean? The other thing is, there are so many things that uh, should not should do not do in the in the consciousness. For instance, that I have very big dilemma in uh, it's to use right or left hand. This is the biggest thing, and I am so afraid of it because uh, I have got. Uh, problem because of the operation which had happened very much I have been through four operations anyway my uh, sight has changed so I can't use left at all in anything even in hygienic so now I use my hand my right hand in everything but it's wrong because when you use your hygienic, you shouldn't use your right hand. You should use your left hand because I have to hold in the Tulsi uh, mala. And that is offense. How to do it? There is, there is my fear, you know what I mean? So what to do then? Is it enough that I have in my head, I have all respect, yeah. all, all love, and I want to do right everything, but my physical condition don't allow me to do in certain way that is acceptable. Is it enough that I have good thoughts? This question you have to ask Guru Maharaj because I'm not in the position to guide you on these finer aspects, which may be um, 
very particular for you. I can only give general. So I think it is best that you check with Guru Maharaj and get his guidance and blessing because Guru Maharaj is a pure devotee. He's a bona fide spiritual master. And if he says, this is fine, this is okay, then you have no worries. But I cannot say like that. You see, I don't okay. know what is it. So best if you ask Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Devotees, any more questions or comments? So, Mataji, um, I just want to um, share my. Um, I was thinking when I was reading uh, the purport, like uh, Mother Yashoda was uh, not at all interested in knowing who Krishna was. So, um, so she is like um, uh, she is like actual mother. So uh, she doesn't want even uh, to know. So that uh, so I was thinking like uh, in our mundane life also material life also um, we don't care how much um, um, our sons or daughters are grown up and they they reach any position we don't care uh, what their position is but they'll be always our children like uh, so we always love them and we always correct them if they uh, go wrong or um, if we get angry with them and uh, so. That's what I noticed since my childhood. So, so I was just thinking in that way that whatever may be the position of our children in the society, um, we we don't care as a mother. As a mother, we don't care, and um, we we just love them as our children, like a babies. Only since we always cherish those moments of the childhood and uh, how we, how they were not here in the childhood and how they used to. Mm -hmm. um, quarrel for small small things so like all these things so i was just thinking in that way mm -hmm. yeah, our children are our children no matter you know what uh, achievements they have made yeah. or uh, age they are they are always saying did you eat your food are you getting sleep <laughs> even yeah. though a lot of people they ask just questions. checking on them yeah <laughs> she worries about her kid you know so that's natural, and that's uh, that's a mother's love, that's a mother's heart. But we must also be cognizant that they are grown ups. They are the, they are the, at least in my case, my daughter is an adult, and you know I have to respect her wishes and her ideas, which may be radically different from mine and my desires and my wishes. So all those things, it's all of this is a big learning experience, you know, for actually us to mature more and more. Um, and understand ultimately every soul has their own relationship with Krishna and in some ways a mother has to learn to also let go you know many things yes Mataji yeah so mother Yashoda uh, she didn't even um, bother about uh, the position of Lord Krishna even after um, so many years like after this past time Mataji maybe later when he went back um, he he left Vrindavan and went to Mathura and uh, after that Dwaraka. So Mother Eshoda, she she was not aware. Like she must be, she knows that he is the supreme personality of Godhead, right? Later on, past times, I don't know of uh, when she went to Dwaraka, he became king. Or what happened to Eshoda? What happened to Nand We don't hear so much there. And also they, and how Devaki was telling him, now I'm seeing you as a king. I missed out on your childhood. And uh, that's how that Urbi Sri Krishna Murti was, you know, made for her a pleasure. And then later on, Rukmini worship. So I have heard those pastimes, but I've not heard when Krishna became king in Dwaraka. Uh, they were in great separation. They were in great separation in Vrindavan. And they were waiting for Krishna to come back. And they were thinking, when is Krishna coming back? So that much I know. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is no further description beyond that as far as I, I can recall. Okay, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you. Scarlett, Mataji, you have anything to ask again? Mataji. Uh, yes. Uh, I just want to know if I have learned uh, wrong. Uh, I remember reading somewhere that 
Krishna never left Vrindavan. Uh, Krishna, as well as he has all the time, all the uh, all in all his pastime, he has expanded himself to. For instance, when Brahma took the uh, uh, children and the cow, and he could do himself to all these children, and the parents didn't know the children was away, and he has done the same way. Uh, have I start understand it wrong? No. That, no. Uh, Maybe Mother Yashoda and Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. It is the Vasudev Krishna who goes and kills the demons and does everything. Vrindavan Krishna always stays in Vrindavan. At the time of birth, Yashoda Mata gave birth to a baby boy Krishna, and Devaki gave birth to a baby boy Krishna. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they join together. So when Krishna leaves Vrindavan, he leaves. Who leaves? Vasudeva Krishna leaves. But Vrindavan Krishna always stays in Vrindavan. So Vrindavan Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. We have a team, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sula Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you for this uh, very, very beautiful class. Uh, so I just wanted to um, clarify, Mataji, you explained like a pure love uh, that attracts Lord Krishna without awe and reverence, right? So um, again, it, it relates to like Raj Prabhu's question. So when we condition, so like when it comes to um, following the footsteps of uh, Mother Yashoda, so we are not that stage where we can engage in a pure love with Lord Krishna. So we are conditioned. So for our understanding is right now, our consciousness is so much impure. So when it comes to uh, like following the mother Yashoda's footsteps is first is we have to deal, understand like, you know, um, when it comes to family. So we have to deal with them with a pure love. I mean, try to apply in that way. Then, um, uh, then we can actually think about like, you know, engaging a pure devotion service, right, Mataji? So those simple steps first we have to take, then we'll come to the level of pure love. Well, not just family members, in every activity that we do, in every interaction that we have, it may be the milkman, the garbage man, the driver, anyone. anyone. We have to have this service attitude that somehow or the other, let me please Krishna through this interaction. Mm -hmm. Bhakti Tita Maharaj said that try to treat everyone you meet with the same quality of love that you give to the person you love the most. Bhakti Tita Maharaj said, remember that uh, the quality of the interactions you have with the people is an index of your spirituality. So it's not just treating family members with love. We should treat everyone with love because who is not our family? Who is not our family? Everyone is a child of Krishna ultimately. You see? So we must try to see Krishna in the heart of each and every person. We may just encounter them uh, in an uh, escalator. We may just encounter them in the grocery store. But still, we must try our level best to be the best possible person in that moment, so that we serve them as Krishna would want us to serve them in that moment. It may be a very simple thing. They may have dropped something, we just pick it up and give it to them. Or they're asking us help, that we give them direction in a polite, helpful way. We treat everybody thinking this person could be Krishna in, in this form. I don't know. We don't know who this person is. Krishna may come in any way. So let me do my best. His Holiness Bhakti Tita Maharaj said also at one point, see every interaction as a gift of love or a cry for love. So very powerful, isn't it? You read Bhakti Tita Maharaj's books, it will benefit you immensely about how he explained how we should deal with people, how we should deal with daily life, with different interactions that we have we are tested all the time it's not just with family members we are tested all the time and so we must try to bring out that love which is there in our hearts for everyone more and more 
And that's this process of Krishna consciousness. Because how can we claim we love Krishna if we don't love his parts and parcels? You see? Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The whole world is my family. You understand? Yeah, yes. Yeah, beautiful. So because still our level is not like where we engage in a pure love for Krishna. So dealing with everyone, all living entities in the same way, following the footsteps of Mother Yashoda and the great personalities. Yes. That yes. Little by little, by little, yeah, by we little. should try to find that pure love which is there in our hearts for everyone. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Beautiful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Dear devotees, any more questions or comments? Okay, Mataji. Oh, Namata Mataji. Yeah, please. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to their Gurudev. All glories to the assembled devotees. Uh, uh, yes, Dhammudar Lila is uh, wonderful to relish all the time. So, uh, Mataji, I was uh, just like wondering on a very basic question, but maybe uh, you can little clarify in that. So I wanted to know a little about the Ashwarya Bhav, because uh, sometimes uh, the mood of awe and reverence, because I sometimes, uh, you know, uh, can't understand uh, the mood of awe and reverence, and then, you know, uh, the Gopi Bhav, so I just uh, get blocked in that. So mood of awe and, awe and reverence is like totally, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not totally aware. Uh, as far as uh, deity worship is concerned, I, I just, I can think of that. But after that, how can we see the mood of awe and reverence? I'm, I'm not able to distinguish a little. Can you help me with that? Yeah, we are meant to and we are required to and we are expected to worship the deity in the mood of awe and reverence, Lakshmi Narayan. That is what is expected of us because we are not uh, pure devotees that we can just uh, do anything. So we are encouraged to approach the deity form with, with the mood of awe and reverence in order to worship the form of the Lord properly. But at the same time, we are encouraged to cultivate more and more the sentiments of the rasa, which is our eternal rasa. We all have an eternal rasa in the spiritual world. And this process of Krishna consciousness will uncover more and more what is my rasa, what is my eternal relationship with Krishna. But it's a gradual process and only the highly elevated stages we can understand that the spiritual master will tell us. We don't have to worry about it right now. <laughs> right now, we're just struggling to chant around. <laughs> you know, and we're still at the offensive stage, now Abhrad. So as we come to Shuddha Naam, as we become, you know, there is stages. First is the Namabhas, then is Namapara, then is Shuddha Naam, and uh, sorry, then is Nam, uh, Nam Abhas, Shuddha Nam, yeah, Shuddha Nam. That means pure chanting without offenses. And as we perfect that more and more and more, then we will, our eternal relationship will be revealed to us and we will know our rasa, our eternal loving mellow in which we have that relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world. But yes, the process is go slow and worship the Lord in the mood of mood of and reverence. But continuing the practices of bhakti will uncover our real bhava, real rasa in the spiritual world. Uh, okay, thank you, Madhaji. That quite clears. Just a one little follow up. So uh, the four sampradays uh, of Vaishnava sampradays. They um, they worship the Lord in different moods. So uh, out of that Sri Sampradaya uh, is known for the mood of awe and reverence, right? Yes, it, that's been right. Yeah. So uh, how do they go beyond that? I mean, uh, 
so as as you are saying i'm understanding that the basically oi and references required for when we worship but then when we advance when we go beyond a, a certain limit in bhakti uh, our a spiritual master helps us to understand our position so um, so i was what about like the sampradayas how do they approach is that what you are asking yeah so they just I get know. okay no i don't know so much of the advanced stages in the other sampradayas i have not gone so deep into all that um but i do know that if you want to enter into the vrindavan pastimes of the lord you can only do that by approaching chaitanya mahaprabhu and you can only do that by approaching the process of bhakti so i don't know what happens in the other sampradayas maybe we can ask guru maharaj to find out so much in depth about what their practices are or what happens at their higher stages how do they come do they come to you know the higher stages i know that if we want to enter into the vrindavan pastimes of the lord we have to approach through this process of bhakti as given by chaitanya mahaprabhu It's not possible otherwise okay yeah because um uh, the the Uh, pushti margi sampraday uh, i think it is vishnu swami uh, so in that i can understand the vatsalya mood the uh, worship of bal krishna the laddu gopal so they are relishing till the uh, vatsalya mood uh, brahma gaudiya sampraday is uh, relishing uh, till the madhurya uh, mood so i am little unable to understand about the um, yeah we know that uh, the mood of sri sampradaya is awe and reverence but uh, do they go beyond that or so i was just little ju- uh, juggling in that so i just asked it. yeah i think we can ask guru maharaj this question because i don't know so much the in depths of the other sampradayas okay thank you thank you very much Nice Thank you, Mataji. Namrata Mataji asks uh, such deep questions. Really? I, 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 I don't understand the question itself. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. um so if there are no more questions then we can end the call here thank you so much mataji uh, for giving once again for spontaneous thank class you. and nice question answer session thank you so much thank you all of you for participating my humble obeisance is to everyone vancha kalpata vyacha kripa sindhu kiya vacha patita naam pavane bhyo vishnu me bhyo namo namaha and please hare krishna obeisance is my drawbacks <laughs> my hare krishna Hare Krishna thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you Navadar Lila ki jai Shila Prabhupad ki jai Jai Maharaj ki jai Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you thank you very much Jai Devi jai